Good evening, Malaysia, Indonesia, and followers from around the world. Tonight, we have a very special guest. She is the face of the LBGT community. She's an entrepreneur, she's an actor, activist, and she has a huge, and I mean huge, following in Indonesia. She's none other than our gorgeous Dana Rashman. She's, she has a fantastic uh, background and uh, she, she's a regular presence in uh, the Indonesian the mainstream uh, TV stations as well as the uh, big, uh, enormous social media platform in Indonesia and around the world. She holds a degree in political science and communications from the University of Indonesia. And before continuing her studies in the University of Bologna in Italy. So uh, we shall begin this conversation with her. Now, uh, what have you been doing lately? <laughs> Hello. Well, first of all, I just, I, I'd like to say I'm very honored to be here. I'm always happy to share whatever I can share. So hopefully sure. it will be fruitful uh, to everyone who's watching this. Uh, well, I've been doing just my work. <laughs> it's, it's the usual stuff. It's still we are still in uh, the pandemic, and I have yeah I have I have a business to run uh, my model management uh, on a day to day basis, and I also have like this clothing line uh, as my business as well. But then I I am also now active uh, as an activist, so I have so many uh, projects and events, and usually I'm. Uh, acting as a speaker, moderator uh, yeah. for this conference or webinar, uh, voicing uh, gender equality. So has the uh, pandemic affected your business uh, in the operations? Uh, well, of course, we need to adjust here and there for a little while. I mean, during the uh, first period of the pandemic, uh, we were hit. Of course, uh, it, hap it was happening around the world. But then uh, we managed to, thank God, we managed to find uh, ways to deal with the pandemic. Uh, like uh, when I run my business, uh, yeah. the model management, because mm -hmm. nowadays we do mm -hmm. know how to, uh, let's say, to hold a fashion show, to hold a, a photo shoot uh, still with... Um, safety measure uh, COVID wise. So now it's, uh, I think we are actually uh, progressing. We are, uh, I can say that it's actually been better than before the pandemic. We are still growing. So yeah, thank God. It's, it's, okay. it's something that right. is amazing. <laughs> Dana, I, I want to ask you this question. Uh, you have been a regular presence uh, in Indonesia. I've watched the interviews that the mainstream media has conducted with you. And of course, uh, those conducted on social media platforms. Um, do you feel that uh, over the recent years, is there an increasing tolerance and acceptance of the uh, LBGT community in Indonesia? Or is it just confined to the cities like Jakarta and it is not so very safe in the rural areas? What is your perception and view on this? Okay, um, right. Mm, I can, I would like to say that we are kind of um, progress towards the right direction. Uh, we are getting more open, we are getting more accepting. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it's also rather confusing in the sense that uh, we don't have specific law that criminalize uh, like same-sex activity or uh, different gender identity and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But we also don't have law that uh, protects the minority group. So uh, yeah. many times we are discriminated. Many times we are harassed mm -hmm. by uh, the system, I would say. Uh, so if we're, speak if, we're, if, if we're speaking about on day-to-day uh, -day life, we can still thrive, we can survive, we can live side by side with the society. It's, normally, it's not a problem. Uh, mm -hmm. But when dealing with administration, when dealing with uh, institutional things, 
Yeah. And that's uh, the point where I can say that we are heavily discriminated. So, uh, but I am happy uh, recently, uh, the government is extending their service to the trans people because um, so recently they have this um, program to offer um, national identity for trans people because um, most of the trans due to uh, the social stigma they mm -hmm. are being denied by their own families they are being rejected so they have to live on the streets and stuff like that so uh, it makes them vulnerable it makes them live without uh, having proper identification without having proper administration as a citizen mm -hmm. so uh, with that program it's a step forward uh, it's not perfect because it's still uh, offers binary concept of gender. But yeah. I would say it's uh, progress because yes. the thing is uh, the fact that uh, the government um, helped the program, it shows that uh, we are now being acknowledged, that we yes. exist. So um, yeah, but I mean, um, of course, like the society in the big cities like mm. Jakarta, we are, uh, we are a melting pot. Uh, so yes. we see uh, many different uh, characters, many different people from yeah. many backgrounds. So it's in the nature of the uh, Jakarta to be more open and progressive and modern. But also, uh, if you, I think it really depends on the rural areas because yeah, I yeah. know for a fact in East Nusa Tenggara, uh, yeah. there's one uh, government official who's a trans. Uh, yes. And it's a rural uh, area in Indonesia, but they are also uh, already progressive. They're also being open about uh, gender and sexuality. But, but also we can find other big city in Indonesia that are uh, a bit more close-minded. So it really depends yeah. on the culture of that local area. But yeah, I would like to remain hopeful that we yeah. are um, moving forward uh, towards a better future for the minority uh, group. Yeah. Dina, you mentioned this um, transgender. Uh, she was the first, the uh, first official to be voted uh, in an election, right? If that's the one. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. I yeah. know, I know her personally, so yeah, uh, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. It's yeah, like she actually came from a rural area. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty rural as in yeah. it's not like it's not big right. city it's not like uh, because it's apa ya, what do you call it like it's it's this mm. island yes. and it's just a small town yeah so you can consider it rural like it's a country yes. side right. kind yes. of thing <laughs> I think generally people are acceptance the problem starts when we have uh, people who speaks on the religious ground imposing yeah. their religious values on others. That's when yeah. the problem starts. Um, how, how did you be, became a uh, spokesman for the uh, community? <laughs> if, okay, to be honest, I, I didn't really plan it uh, <laughs> because I used to be a child star. So when I was little, mm. I was this uh, kid who performs, who sings and who act, I was a presenter. So I was uh, in the entertainment industry. So people kind of knew me back then, but not like this. <laughs> and then um, in 2011, when I um, was getting my MBA degree in Bologna, Italy, uh, there's this, uh, I was already taking a break from the industry for a while because I know uh, that there's just no space for a person like me in the showbiz. So yeah. I was just focusing on my study. I was just focusing on uh, achieving my dream to become an entrepreneur. <laughs> so I was just like studying. And yeah. then there's this media uh, and there's this uh, threat in this online platform at that time, 2011, yeah. Uh, yeah. specifically talking about me. Specifically, oh, okay. talking, yes, it was like a really long thread uh, mm. talking about facts, but also rumors, like talking about mm. how I dressed up 
okay. to my campus at that time to University of Indonesia and stuff like that. Okay. So this uh, editor mm. of this online media uh, emailed me and asked me to uh, for an for an interview, and I was I like, well, I don't think that's uh, necessary because I wasn't anyone uh, at that yeah. time. I was like having a break, right? So I, I yes. thought no one would even notice. No one would even care. And then I was contemplating, but uh, he made sure that it's a good opportunity for me to clarify on some things that, yeah. have, that have been said uh, on the track. So I was, okay, uh, I agreed. And then he um, emailed me like these 10 questions and I just replied to the email mm. basically. And then the next day, next thing i knew i woke up in italy uh, i received many twitter notifications at that time and i received many blackberry messengers at that time i was like oh my god what happened with my twitter what happened with my phone was it like some kind of error or something like that but I, and my mom texted me asking what did she do like i didn't do anything well apparently uh my answers to those questions it suddenly became headline okay it was huge at that time making five uh headlines and people were just crazy about it people were just like it was a frenzy actually so mm -hmm. uh i didn't expect that and so i thought that uh wow maybe because indonesia at that time we didn't really have figure um, mm. in that position that represents the minority. So when my name came up, rose again to prominence, like people would want to know, oh, this is the child star that we used to know, but she's actually now transformed something like this. So it was huge at that time. And then oh, also uh, there's pros and cons, of course. And when I got back to Indonesia, uh, I started to uh, receive many invitations to appear yeah. on TV uh, to basically share my story. Well, at first I was hesitant to do so, but then I think, um, well, probably it's a good thing for me to just share. And mm. after I did a couple of interviews, um, I received many hatred, of course. I received many negative comments, of course, but also I received yeah. many positive uh, feedback. Uh, basically saying that, uh, wow, we are so blessed by your story. We never knew that there are other ways of loving your kids, yeah. basically, who are different. So uh, my story became like um, a benchmark, not a benchmark, but it became something yeah. that people look to it at that time. So well, one thing leads to another. I received many invitations also to speak, to share, to to uh, sh yeah, to share my personal experience. Um, I have been working with many uh, international organizations uh, from that moment on until now, and then that's when I knew that wow, my story, or even I have this platform, and um, it actually helps people. So that's when I decided to uh, I want to commit my life to public service, in this case, mm -hmm. specifically to advance uh, LGBTQ plus rights. So yeah, that's the story. <laughs> Dina, you mentioned BlackBerry. I've almost forgotten about the existence of BlackBerry. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, it's, it's at that time when it was a huge thing. Do <laughs> um, you, you feel that the uh, presence of social media has given the community a better platform which you can control yeah. the narrative. Do you think that it has helped the community a, a lot? Uh, yes. Uh, for me, well, uh, I can speak on mm. my uh, personal experience because yeah. uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but uh, we do have this uh, Indonesian Broadcasting Commission yeah. and mm. they have this regulation to forbid effeminate uh, character uh, to yes. be portrayed in the mainstream media. So ever since mm. I, uh, let's say that my presence mm. uh, in the mainstream media has been decreased because yeah. uh, of the regulation. So I wouldn't 
uh, be allowed to appear on TV, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So with the rise of new media, with the rise of digital media, um, now we have at least an alternative platform for us to uh, be more visible. Yes. So we won't be erased. We can't, let's say we are regulated on the mainstream media, mm. but uh, now we have this platform, we have this uh, social media that we can use it, that we can utilize it to, um, to, to voice our aspiration to basically to be present. Right. That's the most important thing because well, um, the, the, the problem is about our decreasing visibility mm. with all the regulations, with everything that has been going on. Um, we are, our visibility has been decreased. Mm. And these social media is one way to uh, put ourselves out there to yeah. let people know that, hey, we exist and yeah. we can be good, something right. like that. Yes, does the mainstream media or the TV stations in Indonesia, are the regulators very strict about the appearance of the LBGT community or national TV? Are they really strict on it? Well, it's, this is the thing that, it, you know, it, it feels very vague. If, you, if you're talking about uh, Indonesian law and regulation, because the, the, the law or the regulation, it was supposed to uh, protect minor at yeah. first. Um, but then with that comes the consequences that we, uh, or should we say a trans who portrays positivity also cannot uh, appear mm. in this mainstream media. Because before, it's actually there's so many uh, figures um, yep. portrayed in this uh, variety show that mm -hmm. yes, it's actually uh, very um, diminished the okay. uh, integrity of a yes. minority, basically. So yeah. what it, if you look at it one yeah. way, it's a good thing. It's a positive. But also there's consequence. Yeah. Now we mm -hmm. cannot voice our aspiration on TV. So uh, with that, uh, I think it's it, um, it's becoming very confusing. But yeah. they just don't want to uh, deal with the society because if you yes. appear on TV, obviously, like the public will notice, yeah. and the media won't have to be responsible. They don't want to sure. bear the responsibility to yeah. put this figure forward yeah. on national yes. television, basically, basically right. like that. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, the availability of the social media platform like this uh, gives the uh, community a, a good chance to talk intelligently. Uh, yeah. With characters, yeah, with characters explained on uh, the, net, the series, the TV series, sometimes they, they put the uh, the character in a very bad light. It's somebody yeah. that you put for, not, not somebody who can speak intelligently. Eh? Yeah. Um, I, I've seen your, your interviews. I've seen also Mylon Cyrus. I think you were a guest there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she's, she's really... Well, I, was, I was a guest. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. a guest speaker uh, yeah, yeah, at yeah. her um, talk show. Yeah. But yeah, that's, and, that's the thing. I mean, I personally also uh, host and produce my talk show. It's called yeah. Baby Talk. Uh, it's the best we chat at all, so it's, uh, it's a safe space to speak. Basically, we uh, the idea is uh, to give platform for us to talk about something that you don't usually talk about in the mainstream media. That's why. So this platform like YouTube is very important for us, so we can be there. Also, um, uh, with the rise of TikTok. This is also, yep. I, I'm not on TikTok, but I'm happy to know that uh, they say TikTok is a safe space for the Gen Z to yeah. uh, express themselves uh, as who they are. And yeah. if you throw like a negative comment towards someone, they will actually uh, defend the person because in TikTok, 
you can you can fully express yourself and that's a good thing because sure. you can you can express the gender identity that you want to portray without having someone yeah. throwing negativity at you yeah. so yeah I'm, i'm actually very happy <laughs> dina um you come from a family your your, your father was a choreographer uh, the the artist uh, artistic Um, yeah. You grew up. You grew up in that kind of uh, environment. You were a child um, a performer. You know. Um. You do you feel that this kind of environment help help you in terms of discovering yourself? Uh, at, at what point did you felt that you you, you had experienced this? Uh, uh, the changes in you internally that you you felt that you you actually a woman, and that uh, at what point did you your your parents uh, notice that and they uh, you had to t- you had to share that with your parents. Well, yeah, I think I can say that I am lucky to have a very supportive family. Uh, my family is very um, liberal, mm-hmm. and they're modern and they're progressive, and they choose love over stigma. They choose accepting over um, rejecting. So, um, but. Yeah, my father has an artsy background. I mean, like art runs in my blood. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think it helps me in being brave enough, being confident enough to express myself, and also uh, being more open to ideas that are mm-hmm. more out of the box, not confined to the society. Has to put you in. So uh, with that, I think uh, yes, uh, it does have an impact, but not shaping my sexuality or my gender identity. It just shaped me to be a person who is more confident, to be a person who is more open to ideas, whatever it is. I can say that because yeah, my I have so many. I met so many um sure. figures. I met so many um friends of my parents, and they're coming from different backgrounds. So it makes me also receptive to the world outside of me. Yeah, when you share that, that. With, when, when sorry, when you share that to your dad. Um, did he express the reservations of the journey you were taking, because uh, he was worried that uh, you were, you may not be quite ready to face the uh, challenges that will be placed along the way. Was that the reason? Yes, that's correct. I hmm. think okay. Well, I never knew that before I came out, right? Uh, so I was just struggling with myself without knowing my, without knowing the concern of my parents, basically, but. There, there have been friends with many minority okay. groups uh, who belong to minority groups. Uh, yeah. So I think their concern was about my future. Mm-hmm. And I just knew that when I was about to come out. That's why I prepared myself um, to make sure that my life choice uh, is going to be okay, whatever it is. So I... Uh, was a fresh graduate from University of Indonesia, and I already mm-hmm. like um, entered the fashion industry to work. And then I have I had worked with many of my uh, parents' friends, and they actually share to my parents that wow, I actually um, worked with your uh, kid, and she's bright, and she's smart, and she's. Beautiful! Wow, she's so talented and stuff like that. So, without having to um, mm. say it myself to my parents, they already know about my yeah. quality. So that's actually the thing uh, that makes me confident to come out to my parents because I can now I can make sure that my life choice and my future is going to be okay. Even if I decide to follow this uh, path, you know. So um, yes. Yeah. So I think that's why when I came out, their um, what they said at that time is okay. But remember to always put your education first, 
and yeah. then yeah and then to always know what you're going to do because your life choice is not going to be easy yeah. and, they, and they know so the, mm -hmm. yeah you're right so i think that's the kind of reservation that they had on adina in, in all your advocacy we have always used this uh, very strong term uh, in fact i have been very impressed uh, with this uh, advocacy of yours which you always say that look um a human being uh, please treat me like a human being um and it, it actually struck me very, very strongly i thought it was really good uh, because uh, malaysia and indonesia are quite similar in that sense that is a it is still a very conservative country yeah <laughs> um, and, and of course and there are powerful uh, groups powerful individuals who are very loud yeah? and the minorities are, are always um, marginalized okay the voices get trampled upon um, but it's always very easy to pass judgment on people yeah and for me life is very simple you are a good person or a bad person yeah. it doesn't matter uh, what you look like what you wear yeah, exactly uh, uh, and but and this passing judgment is actually uh, beginning to wrap on a lot of people the world has changed uh, but they have not moved on so what in, in your own advocacy what do you tell indonesia uh, what do you tell them knowing that uh, it's really going to be it's, it's really tough okay yeah uh, indonesia is, even indonesia is much probably a much a bigger hurdle uh, than uh, than malaysia but, but what do you tell them in, in your line of advocacy okay um i'm sorry it's raining hard here if, <laughs> if you can hear the thunder and stuff it's okay. uh, well uh yeah uh so there's a saying in indonesian i don't know if you know this or not uh, it says Taknal makata sayang. if you don't know then you cannot love, basically. Yeah. So I would say that um, this is also uh, from my personal experience. When I yeah. rose to prominence the first time, they threw like many negativity at me because they only know from the surface. They only, ju they only judge me from my appearance. So I was just this trans without them knowing who I really am what I stand for and stuff like that. But then um, with my journey, and um, this is why I think it's a very good, uh, it's a very important thing for me to always set a good example uh, because you can see uh, the work, you can see uh, the quality of a person from what they do without you have to say it. So I just, create i just be myself and uh be productive and uh, do what i do which is to spread goodness so uh, without without having to say it people now who follow my journey know my quality know my capacity that i may be a trans but i am also a good person who just speak about um, love basically my message is simple it's about love if you put love at the center of everything that they do that that includes your relationship includes your uh, work includes your business includes everything we can actually live side by side and that's why when you know a person with everything uh, comes with the person, um, then you can love because you know she's not just a trans, she's not just a homosexual, she's not just a gay, they're not just bisexual or whatever. The identity is not, it's no longer relevant because you see the quality of a person, you see their work, you see what they stand for. You see their, their values. You see how they actually can contribute to the society and stuff like that, rather than passing judgment. So that's uh, my principle, basically, for and my message also to people who are quick to pass judgment, uh, basically. So yeah, you have to really know the person. And most of the time, People don't want to know. People only want to. Um, people only want to judge from yes. what they see, because they see with the lens of human. 
Uh, they yeah. fail to see that we are all created equally. We are all human beings with our flaws, but also we do have many uh, positive sides with us, but they don't want to see that. So yeah, I hope that people can see the quality in us other than our gender identity or our sexual orientation, because we are so much more than that. Dina, uh, yeah. you're a public figure. And obviously, uh, if there are praises, there will always be criticism. Uh, how do you live up uh, with criticism? Uh, not everybody can take criticism, especially on social media, but it's, it's so sharp, okay? Now, uh, you, you took part in the two uh, Pride Parade. I think one is in New York, and one was in Australia, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. <laughs> and, it invite, and invited compliments as well as criticism. How do you handle criticism? Mm, well, you know... Um... I, I used to uh, care a lot about my image, about what uh, people see me, uh, how people see me, but it's no longer relevant nowadays yeah. for me because I, I think I take everything as lesson learned. I take my experience as lesson learned. Even I am still um, learning always to become better, to become more humble, to, uh, to be, to serve better. So um, with that criticism that I face, I just take it as my motivation to prove to them that uh, they're wrong, to prove to them that um, their criticism is baseless basically so i now i don't really care about them uh, because people will talk obviously uh, let them be let them do that let them talk i want to focus on the thing that um yeah i always say that we have to be perfect all the time I mean, in, in the sense of we have to be good because uh, when we are perfect, we even criticize, we get criticized. So uh, we, ha we have to be flawless. That's why we are not starting from zero. We are starting from minus. That's why it's yeah. always important to be a good person so people can see uh, beyond our identity. So yeah. those criticisms don't matter and we are going to uh, challenge it. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Um, do, not, do, do, not, do not take criticism or uh, insults too seriously, especially on social media. Uh, yeah, these, are I mean... bullies, these are cowards and bullies who hide behind their screen. And well, as I say that, even God gets criticized every day. So what are we mere human beings? Exactly, exactly. Okay. I mean, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's a humbling experience, but yeah. Yes. Now, Dina, I've, I'm running out of time. I have one last question for you, okay. Dina. <laughs> Okay, uh, minorities, the gay community, LGBT, whatever you call them, gets criticized around the world daily. Okay, some are better off, uh, but some gets into a very tough position, they get persecuted, uh, they get humiliated. What is your advice uh, to the uh, community uh, from people around the world, especially in a very conservative society who can't even uh, talk about themselves? Okay, their, their depression, their frustrations. Yeah let alone their feelings and their thoughts, okay? Now, what is your advice to them, to those people who are watching this tonight? Okay, I think um, it, it, it's not easy. I know it's not easy because I used to be at that, at that position. Uh, when you are struggling, you can't see clearly. You feel like you're in the dark. But my message is, I think I want them to know that they're not alone that they're not alone. Uh, so uh, hang on there and to stay hopeful. And remember that uh, this is also a, a saying that I always remember uh, and I live by uh, the word. Um, helplessness is a situation. Hopelessness is a decision. So even if you are facing a helpless situation, you can always decide to be hopeful. So maybe you are struggling, maybe you are feeling like you're helpless, but please remain hopeful because you are not alone. And 
we can strive and we can move uh, forward, we can progress by being together. And I believe that. I remember to always be a good person, to show love and to spread goodness. That's the thing. I think that's the key. It's love. Yes. It's always love. <laughs> yes. And Dina, the word hopeless starts with the word hope. Yes. And, <laughs> so, and, hope. And, and, correct. And uh, don't let the people judge you. It is not for them to judge. It is for God to judge, not this human being. Exactly. Yeah. It's, I, I, I always uh, believe that it's not a uh, human business to change other character and you can only surrender it to God. If you want it, you can pray about it, but it's not your business, people. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Diana. Thank you so much for joining us and yes. expressing your thoughts. I, I enjoyed this conversation. Really great. <laughs> wow, me too. I, I, I enjoy this. Thank you so much for having me here. It's really uh, a pleasure. Okay. Um, Please uh, like, share, and follow us on social media. And uh, please do not forget to click the subscribe button. This is Real Chinoy. Thank you, Dana. And good evening and good night to all. Thank, Thank you. you.